Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. This is a super... I, I wish I was attending this earlier, but last year in Gdansk was my first, uh, first ORCONF, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, didn't check an email for two and a half days. So, what, uh, Otherwise, I'm an email junkie. So, um, so it's, it's great to be here. Um, um, can somebody tell me, since we're not starting on time, when I'm supposed to finish? So that I don't don't get like thrown away from the stage. Like two p.m. or or like one fifty-five or two p.m. Okay, cool. All right. So give me like a ten-minute heads up when everything gets. All right. So um, I'll, I have one presentation today on the CHIPS Alliance and the CHIPS Alliance uh, technical projects, just so it's not completely dry and organizational. And then I have another presentation tomorrow of, on OmniExtend, which is a Western digital uh, uh, open source hardware technology. Um, so for the CHIPS Alliance talk, the uh, agenda is roughly who we are, who, what is CHIPS Alliance, where did it start from, uh, what are the project's goals and, and deliverables, what's the organizational structure, who are the people, like how it's being run, what's the governance model, meaning what's the PowerPoint redux of the particip participation agreements and such, bylaws. Um, and then uh, what are the current work groups we are working on, what are the current events and conferences, and then to, to, to make the PowerPoint a little bit more exciting, I included CHIPS Alliance example projects, where I'll go through, through um, five or six current projects for which we made PowerPoint. There, there's actually a few more, but they don't really have a good PowerPoint developed, so I just didn't want to didn't wanna do like a dry thing with just text only. So it's, it's just a sub, subset. Okay, um, so who are we? Um, we are the open source hardware and open source design and verification tools um, organization. Uh, the, the goal is really to host high quality uh, IP for RTL, but also to, to really host the open source software tools required for, for hardware designs, EDAs, RTL simulators in the future. Um, in the future, hopefully, like one day further down the road, complete open source design flow. Uh, and uh, these things exist now. I recommend for those of you who don't know to Google Open Road on GitHub. There's a university project funded by DARPA. Uh, and it's kind of exciting. Some, something like that is, is, uh, is a dream of mine since 2014. I think I can use a fully open source uh, tool chain to create a new license for hardware and, and, and make an additional revolution on top of what we can do with Chips Alliance today. Um, who are the founding members? Founding members are a bunch of people who met each other inside RISC V Foundation. Um, it's uh, Google, Western Digital, Esperanto, Sci-5, a couple of other big names that along the way kind of fell off the wagon. They'll come back. Um, what, uh, what I wanted to do in kind of in the early days of RISC V, I wanted to have a work group on the open source RTL implementations. At that time, just narrowed down to RISC V. I wasn't thinking yet about bigger things, about the tools. And they, Professor Patterson and Kirsten told me, uh, yeah, like, go ahead, make a, make a new thing, you know, don't, don't do it here. They really wanted to focus on instruction set architecture as an interface and not really get into the implementations. And what I really wanted was the open source RISC V CPU project in which, in which I can support uh, all the interfaces that are not available to the uh, to the open communities and to academic communities, most notable accelerator interfaces, low latency memory interfaces, and cache coherence interfaces for, uh, for SMP systems. Those are like a three categories that I wanted to study in my research group in Western Digital. Those are also the three categories that a lot of professors wanted to have research on, but it was impossible to do research on QPI because it was closed source. And then obviously there was no other platform that actually had uh, processors defined, like instruction set architecture defined for processors, and a cache coherence, and a physical interconnect, and some kind of low-cost scheme, how to put all the hardware together and not end up spending $100 million, but maybe 20000 So, So that, that was my motive. That's, that's, that's how I actually invested energy into all of this. And 
And tomorrow's talk on Omni Extend will give you kind of a better story, a better idea of what, what, what's really going on from technological uh, perspective for open source hardware and interfaces. Uh, the logos of the current members that, that have signed are here. I hope I'm not missing, missing any of the members. Uh, you can see some big names and some usual suspects from the, um, from the RISC-V uh, community. We are negotiating a couple of even bigger names, and I expect by the end of the year we'll probably, uh, probably have uh, uh, at least five more. We have some, um, um, I think Wilson and all of get always get a good uh, a laugh out of this. We have a category of extraordinary individuals because um, Linux Foundation, who is our uh, 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 sort of a mother umbrella uh, company, they didn't really want to open the like, window to every single individual person who wanted to join the org, so board has to approve. So therefore, therefore uh, some, some level of fame is required. Stefan is also a member, but we don't have a logo of Munich, so we have to get the Munich University of Applied Sciences logo so we can edit here. I'm sorry, I just realized. You are not an extraordinary individual. I'm sorry, your, <laughs> your university has joined, so. <laughs> You're just a, just a professor. Okay, so what is Chips Alliance? It's an organization which develops and hosts uh, high quality open source hardware code like IP cores, interconnect IP, which is obviously very important, both physical and logical protocols. And the idea is to host the interconnect IP required to build SOC, such as tiling, or an interconnect IP that's required to build a systems larger than half meter in scale, um, which is omni-extent, when you want to connect servers in the rack or, or racks together. And uh, third, but probably most important, and certainly the, the, the one category that generates the most interest is open source software development tools for hardware, for design, verification, and uh, more in the future. It's a barrier-free environment for collaboration. This is an important part that I, I hope I never got in trouble with anybody in FOSSI, but I, I've been asked before, what do you need Chips Alliance for if you already have FOSSI? And um, the reason is this, this kind of first, well, all these three bullets. Standards organization framework for collaboration and development, we, and, and kind of clean licensing uh, situation, which is uh, Apache V2 licensing for, for hardware and RTL. Um, the, the mechanism that, that, that in the convenience that Chips Alliance allows is for two relatively large companies who become interested in a common piece of IP, like a, you know, ultra low power two stage uh, uh, RISC V core or open power core, uh, they can join Chips Alliance and have a project on that and have a standards organization framework into how discussion is done and how the, the different revisions of the, of the hardware and its specification are progressing. And, um, and currently, for whatever reason, Apache V2 is, is what, what, um, what makes things work with large corporate names like the one on the previous slides. So that's the kind of one one thing that created a strong, strong attraction point. And, um, and using a, a language in how usually standards organizations are built, and I have a lot of experience on that from my previous uh, standards efforts in RISC-5 and prior to that in, in, in participating in many storage interfaces orgs, kind of building it on that model make it very effective and uh, made it surprisingly easy for big companies to join the org. So lawyers would read the participation agreement that looks like a other standards org, and, and, and uh, we use the language for the hardware. We called it specification, which is not far from the truth. That's how VHDL actually started. And, 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 and that, that makes that make everything uh, work uh, beautifully. Um, and then why, why do people do it? I think for you guys this is obvious, but sometimes it's good to explain it to executives. The shared resources, dollar and time, will lower the cost of hardware development. And that makes a lot of sense for those common pieces of IP that everybody wants to use. So maybe big companies don't want to share you know, the whole complex machine learning as to see that with which they want to make money, but many people may want to share the, the RISC-V cores, the building block, the memory interfaces, the, the uh, interconnect interfaces, and then it makes sense to work on these together and share design verification cost on those. All right, so the, now the next two slides are kind of reformulating all of this. I can maybe go faster. 
So uh, we want to leverage uh, common hardware uh, development efforts. So uh, work on IP blocks that are broadly used, like RISC V cores, um, maybe some uh, neural network accelerator cores in the future. Uh, if you actually know of a good um, NNI project, I, I really, uh, Michael and I are, are looking for it. If, 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 if you can recommend one, I'll take those recommendations. I'm interested. Um, and then standard Encore components, PCI Express, DDR, etc. And um, I sort of, uh, not by mistake, I put this uh, uh, sub-bullet twice, verification contributions will benefit all, you know, so to really have a joint, joint uh, resources and design verification. I, I'm joking, actually, it's, it's a mistake, but, uh, <laughs> but never mind. So. Um, and then uh, what we want to deliver is a high-quality, open source, CPU designs, peripherals, and complex IP block, have a known validated blocks. This is kind of another idea which how this really started for me. I, I, I wanted to avoid um, having an organization that looks like uh, just repository of a variety of pieces of IP. I want to bunch things up in several bigger projects. So it, it looks like we, we have a decent chance of, of starting a mobile mobile uh, Linux-capable SOC based on RISC-V cores. And that's something that I really like. A lot of people would be interested in that. It would include some outer order cores, some in order cores for power management. Uh, DDR controller would be Linux-capable, and a lot of people would be interested to participate in that. And uh, they can still take it away with Apache V2 and do the final customizations for their products. Um, of course, tools are very important. So, um, uh, we already have um, a Wilson joining with Verilator, which is an open source RTL simulator, which is awesome. And I learned it, about it from you guys, from actually from this community last year. Uh, and uh, some other members are interested in deploying cloud-based design verification. And uh, I'm also very interested, uh, and I learned this from Professor Stefan, um, um, to kind of work on radically new design verification schemes, this idea that you can uh, use uh, Python programmers to do design verification seems very powerful for me. Um, we started working on it with, together with colleagues in Antmicro and Stefan, and, and I'm not sure it's a kind of corporate deployment ready, but it's extremely, extremely exciting, and I would like, I'm trying to get it into bigger projects, invest in digital, to kind of get it more, more robust. Uh, for many companies that are already participating or, or are about to participate in, in Chips Alliance, this last bullet is a kind of key motivation uh, from from financial perspective. Um, this is this realization that, that I think all you guys know, sometimes people in the external world don't know it and don't understand it, that open source hardware, like open source software, uh, it's open, but uh, it's not free. Nothing is really free. Making chips is not free. Making a seven nanometer chip may cost easily $15 million. So, so nothing is really free. But open source hardware breaks the barriers that allow people to collaborate. And still, when you have a high quality piece of IP, somebody has to maintain it. Somebody has to support it with a multiplicity of customers, help integration in their design verification uh, environments, report and fix bugs, put them back into GitHub, so this is actually exciting. This opens up a new business model for companies that would actually specialize in that. And this is what we call red hat models for open source hardware. And I'm working with a couple of smaller EDA tool vendors who are actually seriously considering open sourcing their tool and trying to gain more customers by actually supporting their own tool but keeping it in open source. So, so keep watching on this. I, I think this is actually going to be a, a big story. Like in five years from today. And uh, deliverables, um, I kind of already said all of this, verified IP blocks, verified SOC designs, and open source software development tools for ASIC developments. And then exploring new design flows, uh, like a Python-based design verification. And um, if, if our discussions with academic institutions working in Open Road. I would really like to see Open Road fully open design flow hosted in Gypsy Alliance. Um, all right, so that's kind of like what we are. This is uh, our organizational structure. 
So from, uh, from day one, uh, Chips Alliance has been set as a Linux Foundation project. And uh, we have a board of directors. Uh, board of directors um, currently are myself, uh, Richard Ho from Google, Janine Key from Alibaba, Dave Ditzel from Esperanto, and Yusuf Lee, CTO and founder of SciFi. Um, we are in the active search for the executive director. We are looking for a list of our own. Um, and uh, we are interviewing a couple of candidates. But in the meantime, we have a volunteer, Ted Marina, who is, who is volunteering for this job. But this is a paid position. So, so if you know of a good candidate, uh, please, uh, please just let me know. We have like a search committee that's actually interviewing uh, candidates for this job. Um, we have a um, technical committee. And this part of the organization is set up uh, similarly, like in RISC V, with some unique, uh, unique to hardware and unique to open source development projects features. So uh, Henry Cook from sci Five is a chair of technical committee. And uh, we have a bunch of work groups um, with uh, work groups uh, chairs reporting to, reporting to Henry. And each work group can have one project or may have a multiple projects if these projects are kind of relatively small and related, and each of these projects has a project maintainer, the maintainer are choosing who is going to be the chair of the work group, and that person is kind of mandatory to represent this work group and attend all the meetings and report all the issues and get the necessary resources, uh, talk to the board, etc. When we gain more members and more funding, we also want to hire some. Uh, professional hires under contract, verification engineers, software engineers, whatever is needed in some specific uh, project. And I have a chart of what are the existing work groups that we already have. Um, the executive director uh, manages a uh, operations and community manager. Currently, that's a Brian Warner from Linux Foundation. He is volunteering to kind of fill all the gaps and make the make the stuff work, get us private repos on GitHub, or get us a website up and running. And a uh, great benefit of being a Linux Foundation project is that we get a legal uh, and finance operation from, from LF. So they are actually doing the difficult job of sending invoices, or providing a legal advice, or what do you do, and how, you do, how do you collaborate with a Chinese company that may be currently under restriction in some export law or sanctions, etc. And uh, we have an outreach committee, similarly like in the RISC-V Foundation. The chair is uh, Michael Gilda, that I'm sure you guys know. Uh, and uh, um, the, uh, this is the committee that takes advantage of Linux Foundation events group and, and, and will be organizing uh, smaller events and bigger events, uh, et cetera, as we, as, we, as we progress. Okay. Uh, governance model. Uh, if, you, if you go on a Chips Alliance website, you can download the participation agreement and actually see it in legalese. Uh, my PowerPoint summary of this stuff would be we have a governing board or board of directors that does the um, business decisions, uh, reports and manages budget, does the outreach, marketing events, uh, worries about the trademarks, etc. They have a technical steering committee chaired by Henry that uh, proposes projects to be approved and does the top level coordination across projects and, um, and uh, brings in the big uh, decisions like when things go public, etc. We have an outreach committee that coordinates evangelism, communication, training, whatever is needed. And finally, we have a, a meet of the organization where mo most people are, which are project maintainers and technical team uh, work groups. The um, uh, projects are, are, are managed by, not really managed, projects are described, a project's lifecycle document that actually describes um, how any project can actually be considered. The tricky part of the open source hardware is you do not want to end up in a situation where you're hosting, um, you know, six different uh, JTAG um, IPs or, 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 or 16 different DDR4 controllers, none of, the, none of really work, et cetera. But you also want to be all inclusive. You don't want to be in a situation where somebody has proposed the project, 
doesn't have a line of code or doesn't really work, but you're like rejecting it. So we have a lifecycle document that tries to define and makes a difference between, between things that are mature and already work today, you know, like uh, Fuse SOC, or, or, or things that are just a new proposal. Somebody may propose a better package manager that has a great architecture, awesome PowerPoint chart, but doesn't have a line of code. So you, you, you don't want to reject them. You want to have a scheme how you actually move them from seven different phases from proposal to retirement. So, so that's the lifecycle document. And we haven't finished that yet. We have like a legal team like working on it with Linux Foundation, et cetera. But for things that are mature, we are working on the Apache V2 license or actually GPL for some tools if appropriate. And then projects are, are all on the GitHub. And if you go to GitHub slash Chips Alliance, you can actually already see some stuff there. Um, we are in love with Fossil Foundation. So. I'm missing like a heart in the middle or something. Um, membership. Uh, membership is like, like other projects of the Linux Foundation. Project is funded through membership dues and contributed engineering resources. And we have a nice infrastructure. We can also hire engineers if you have money. Um, membership levels are currently uh, platinum, gold, silver, auditor, individual. Academic institutions participate for free, uh, but still need to be approved by a board, uh, board of directors, so, so just to things don't go crazy. Um, and uh, sometimes people ask, uh, platinum level is 25K, gold level is 10K, silver is 5K, auditor is 2K. The benefits of the gold is chairing of the, um, the work groups. Uh, the silver members can participate, we have access to everything, but cannot be chairs. Um, events. Our first public event, we, 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 we basically, when I, when I started working on this with Richard uh, and Amir from Google and Yunsup from sci -Fi, I wanted to call this free chips. But then some other member companies really didn't like the free part because they worried that people will think that chips are free. I don't think anybody thinks that chips can ever be free. Um, so we then changed the name to Chips Alliance and we went public in March. And then in June, in Mountain View, uh, Google hosted the first workshop, which was fully sold. And now in preparation, we have a Bay Area event um, that should happen in October. We have a design verification workshop that uh, together with uh, Fossi and Professor Stefan in Munich, November 14 and 15. Um, uh, that maybe surprisingly may have a lot of visitors actually. I've been, I've been telling a lot of people about this and, and they, they are aware. So we'll see. Uh, and then um, it turns out a couple of big companies from the United States have a lot of design verification engineers in Germany. So. Uh, and then we are working on a second workshop, which will be hosted by Alibaba in Shanghai in early March 2019. I, I forgot exact, exact dates are known, but I, I forgot them. Work groups. So, um, Chisel work group is probably the biggest work group inside uh, Chips Alliance. Uh, it's, it's a massive community uh, with a lot of people from sci fi a lot of students from UC Berkeley. I don't think I have to particularly introduce it to, to you guys here. There is a tools work group which has a Verilator, Fuse SOC, and CocoTB with Verilator support. We are trying to figure out the dates. We're very close to actually starting having regular meetings. There is a course work group which currently hosts Verve Core, but there will be probably more cores. Certainly more cores from Western Digital are coming, but more cores from the other members. And then there is an interconnect work group that currently has a tiling 2.0 and Omni Extend that's actually meeting regularly but has to make their meetings public because currently it's just a private love sci fi and invest in digital. But, but everything, every, 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 all the content that people are working on is actually uh, headed for open, it's already open sourced or, or is about to be open sourced. It, it certainly plan is to have it all open sourced. All right, so to conclude, why is this a good thing? Chips Alliance is a good thing because it enables sharing of resources to lower the cost of hardware development for both digital and analog IP. So 
um, and then uh, contributing to the development of open source design tools software is extremely important and very popular and all the members are interested in that uh, and then the benefit is receiving high quality open source CPU SOC designs and complex IP blocks and finally open source collaboration and diversity can now benefit hardware as well similarly how it made the revolution in software about 20 plus years ago and uh, if you're interested to see more or if you want to join go to chipsalliance.org slash join okay any questions for this kind of first part about who chip you know who we are what we do no questions okay so i have 10 minutes to highlight some of the projects so this is the chart that I showed up in June, you know, uh, the standard block diagram from Wikipedia of what's the flow in, in ASIC design and what are some of the current or future ideas that would be interested in Chips Alliance. So I kind of already mentioned it, uh, but this has some existing things and some I wish I had them or trying to get them. So in open source RTL designs, we already have uh, Swerve, core and you, you also have the rocket SOC generator uh, in key interfaces we have a tiling and omni extent we don't have AI blocks yet I'm looking at several open source academic projects and would really like to host one for neural network inference accelerator and I would also like to build a momentum for the open source CPU or open source SOC with uh, with the out of order cores that we are planning to have next year that would be like Linux capable or Android capable. Uh, in Interconnects, we do have a, a good support with Tiling and Omni Extend. What we don't have, but I would really like to have, is host a standard for chiplets, uh, which, is, um, which is a physical and logical Interconnect standard that allows you to create multi-chiplet packages for complex SOC designs. Sort of the thing that can disaggregate PCI Express IP or, or some new memory controller IP on a separate chiplet and allow it to bond it to the Encore chiplet and build a complex SOC in a much shorter period of time. Many companies, entities, open source projects are working on this, but this sort of thing can only succeed if there is a standard. And if this standard gets used as early as possible, isn't, and many projects kind of explore and, you know. Um, modern design tools, we have Chisel and Fertile and Fuse SOC. You cannot, you, you can never have enough until you have everything from top to bottom here, right? So, so open road is, 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 is maybe a best reflection of the ambition that we have. Um, RTL simulation design verification is, is obviously very important and most expensive part of the, of, the, of the labor that goes into making ASICs. We have a Google contribution on UVM stressful instruction generation. Uh, we are hosting Verilator and want to actually host the system Verilog transition roadmap for Verilator. And we have a CocoTB uh, project uh, with collaboration with Stefan and Endmicro and Fossi. And currently we are working on Verilator support. I've talked about this last year on OrConf, so I'll, I'll point you to the videos from the last year's. This is the Swerve uh, core that uh, Western Digital uh, donated to Chips Alliance along with the trademark. Um, it's a nine-stage superscalar uh, core for embedded applications. It's, uh, it's a hardened core. It's currently in the large volume production, so we are taping out the, the flash controller that's going to use this core as a data pass CPU. And as it comes to, so I, I put this kind of little chart of different open source, open source scores and where Swerve fits. So Swerve kind of with a, being a super scalar fit that mid performance range between what you can do with, with a sing, you know, five stage classical pipeline kind of cores and out of order cores. And that's just the beginning. The, the dotted lines indicate things that we are preparing. So our second generation of core Cores will announce at the RISC V Summit in December. There's an upgrade to Swerve Core that gives even more performance. 
and that there's going to be a small kind of low power, low size um, a RISC V core for FSMs and similar in SOCs. And probably that small core is, at least for Westland Digital, is going to be the main vehicle to get to the billions of cores because we use a lot of these small cores anytime we need a small state machine in our SOCs. And then in the third generation of cores, in the upper right corner, you can expect next year an out of order core with an awesome performance. Um, for design verification using COSIM, um, this is a, a Google, Google project that's now running in Chips Alliance together with Metrics and Imperis. It's sort of a cloud hosted uh, flow for design verification. Uh, and um, you have probably seen this before, but just briefly, uh, you have a stressful transaction instruction generator that generates random instructions of RISC V. And um, the, the L files goes simultaneously in cloud through the Imperis uh, golden model and through the uh, metrics cloud-hosted RTL simulator. And then comparison between the outputs is actually done to do the uh, ver design verification to catch bugs, etc. I'll talk about this more tomorrow, but OmniExtend is a Ethernet fabric. And um, I'm not going to even spoil my, my, my talk for tomorrow. I'll just give a lot of details on this tomorrow. But uh, it's uh, very briefly, it's a cache coherence uh, tiling protocol transported via on top of Ethernet L1 packages for which we figured out a uh, commercially available programmable network switches that can act as a cache coherent switch. So this is the thing where, it, where with about $20,000 in investment, you can have an academic project with, uh, with few nodes uh, and a programmable switch and sort of have almost everything today and next year everything in open source hardware and experiment with different cache coherence uh, protocols. And it works, and I'll tell you tomorrow more about it. Fuse SOC is, uh, is Olaf's project, and we started working with Olaf to have a Swerve support. And, um, and uh, Fuse SOC is a package manager and a build tool, and uh, it supports Swerve. And you can, get it, uh, you can get it running on Verilator, and you can also get it running on an Access A7 FPGA board. Uh, Verilator is a is a fastest uh, known RTL simulator, at least known to me. My CPU design team uses Verilator for our COSIM together with uh, three other commercial tools. Uh, and um, one thing that that Verilator doesn't have that can make it even more widespread in the in the in the commercial worlds of ASICs is a support for system Verilog. So that's something that we want to fund in Chips Alliance. And together with Wilson, uh, we made a roadmap. And, uh, and we'll use the resources of the member companies. And we also use the funds from the member companies to hire professional engineers to enable a full system Verilog support. And then we can also start using Verilator for for building a UVM methodology in open source. And that is something that many uh, member companies are very, very interested in. So stay put about this. Um, as a contribution from, uh, from Berkeley, the Berkeley is about to join, but hasn't really joined yet officially. Uh, there is a Berkeley analog generator, and that's an exciting tool that actually uh, brings the analog, analog circuits into the, you know, through the perspective of um, software-defined uh, software methodology. So you can, you can use for some um, uh, key pieces of analog IP that, last chart, don't worry. Uh, for some key pieces of analog circuits, you can use a sort of um, uh, analog, uh, analog generator. So you, you, can, you can design your circuits in software. And that's actually a very powerful idea. And we are trying to capture a couple of startups that have adopted bag and they're actually using it using it in their in their uh, design flow and that's the last slide so and i'm done
Any questions? Cool. Okay. Hang on, hang on. Unless you have a mic, so you want to. I, I can repeat the question too. Uh, So as a long-term open source person, whenever the word open source IP is mentioned, I cringe a little because it's the entire opposite. I think we should rephrase IP as like incredible power or something in our context. <laughs> Maybe some better words, but yeah. It, it, it's an intellectual property that's actually owned by community. So I think think of IP as a commu yeah. you know in the in the context of open source same as a community sure property, right? but intellectual property in itself is yeah. just a rubbish word I think so it's it's just wrong I agree. it's probably mostly overloaded acronym you know so at one point you said that you want to look at Red Hat for uh, building projects but okay, what when is I a Red Hat oh. type of project or, or, or things. It's a, red, it's a Red Hat under quotation mark. It's like a Red Hat model. Yeah, because yeah. if I look at the rest of your things about uh, bureaucratic over it, I see you more focusing on Apache, Apache Foundation type structure than a Red Hat type structure. To me, Red Hat is more building a commercial project on copyleft community and I think you're more in the Apache, more streamlined, controlled uh, environment. So I, I fully agree with you, and, and we had a panel on this last year. We discussed it. You can you cannot have yet copyleft license on hardware, and the reason why you cannot have that is that the, that the tool chain itself is not copyleft. When I produce a tool chain that's copyleft, then I can revolutionize the hardware licenses. But in the meantime, Red Hat model means that, that you have an open source, you know, something, and that you're making money on it by maintaining it and helping other people use it. That's a loosely, you know. Um, so what's the plan when uh, this large Cambridge IP manufacturer uh, sees uh, this as a threat to their business model? What's, the, what's your plan there? I, I, I don't think, you know, uh, there's two, two ways to look at it, right? Um, for companies that are already heavily invested into creating and licensing IP, RISC V in general just creates an awesome opportunity to, to create another product with, with, with different business model. It would be horrible for anybody's, you know, you can imagine how badly it would be for any big commercial entity image to, to be perceived as suing RISC V or suing open power or suing open source projects. It's not good for it's not good for their image. So in the same vein as Henner before, I also have a terminology thing. Uh, you keep uh, referring to uh, commercial tooling as opposed to open source tooling, whereas of course what we want to bring about is the commercial use of open source software. So I'd rather defer to saying proprietary when you mean closed source, you know, uh, because otherwise it seems like the open source yeah. is, is not in any way commercial, which is not true, of course. Like okay. a lot of commercial companies use open source tooling and we want to actually make everyone use open source tooling. <laughs> Michael Help made my PowerPoint charts, now he's criticizing them. <laughs> I fully agree. <laughs> yeah. I have two questions. When you were talking about the sponsors, I think I understood that to be the chair of a working group, you had to be either gold or platinum sponsors, so it's not possible to be a chair of a working group without paying before. Um, currently, that's the thing, but, but we, we sort of worried, um, we can change the, if necessary, we can look into changing the, the agreements if some, something important happened. I, I was worried, what if Wilson told me, Zvonimir, I want to be the chair of work group because he's an individual contributor, his company didn't join. But then he actually said the opposite thing. He just said, please, I'll participate. Don't make me a chair. I want somebody <laughs> to be there. But if, if something arises, like like individual like that, who, who is not part of Google or somebody, and, and he wants to be the chair, then we'll like, massage the rules and change them. 
The board, board of directors can change that, either by exception or even by rewriting the rules somehow. Great. Yeah, Le Linux Foundation is, is trying to avoid that every single high school student joins uh, Chips Alliance because they have to process all the paperwork. And the other question is completely unrelated. Mm -hmm. It's what about VHDL? I, I mean, you mentioned very long and system very long, lots of times, and very later and different tools, but not VHDL at all. Oh, um, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't have a good answer to that question R right right now. In the, in the uh, world where I'm living in my company and then world of collaborator companies that, I, that I'm working with is very, very log heavy. Um, but if, if somebody had something that's VHDL specific, I, you know, it, it's not, we are not officially very log, we have chisel, right? So, uh, say again? So maybe once we get IBM involved, as far as I know, they do VHDL a lot, then we might have also yeah. VHDL. <laughs> uh, uh, pe pe people that I know from, from IBM, they're very low too. Yeah. But that doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean much because IBM is a big company, right? My, my, my heritage is IBM. My sets of companies is, you know, going backwards, Western Digital, AGST, Hitachi GST, which was a joint venture of Hitachi and IBM, which was Verilog exclusive. When I started working in, in, in IBM research in 1999, everything was 100% Verilog. But say again? Uh -huh. It's a big company, I don't mean, no really know. Going once. Thank you.